<laughs> I get it. I was getting right. a little too comfy. <laughs> I liked the comfort level, though. All right. Well, look at this big showing of our Threads of Wisdom. It's the Sammy and Lola show is what it is. Oh, my gosh. Can that be a thing? <laughs> I know. That would be so awesome. Oh, my gosh. We wouldn't get anything accomplished except just talking. But that would be a great what? show, just us talking. It would be It would be like a podcast. Isn't that yes. the point of the podcast? Yes, yes, just talking about stuff. We, we just got done talking about how coffee makes us go poop. So, <laughs> you know. It, it's the joys of life. It is. Everybody poops. And why I always end up talking about poop with people. I Anyway, I, we're recording. Okay. See okay. what happened? Hi. Welcome to Threads oh. of Wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, you froze. Did you stop? Uh-oh. Or did I? Can you hear me, Sammy? You there? Yeah. Sorry, my phone has the most important time. All right, there you go. There we go. Oh, I can barely hear you, though. There. Maybe? Are we good now? Can you yes. hear me? Yes. Okay. Yay, and see you. All right. Yay. So welcome to Threads of Wisdom. I am Lola with the Children of the Crossroads. We uh, usually are joined by... Silent is, but he had to get called into work today, so it's just me. So, the Threads of Wisdom was created by the Golden Thread Grove in Idaho. It is a teaching tool for your year and a day pagan basics. Each week that you attend, mm -hmm. you will receive an image of the topic we discussed. And the Golden Thread Grove has requested Throve. The Golden Thread Grove has requested that these images not be distributed to anyone that has not participated in a discussion on a particular topic. And at the end of the year, if you've attended all of them, there you will have 52 cards that can be used as a divination tool. And we're gonna run this next year too, so if there's ones you've missed, you can make them up the following year. That yeah. a lot of people do that. <clears throat> so you can get all of your images. So, Today we are on week 34, and our topic is mother. Mm. Mother. So I'm going to go ahead and share the image so you can take a look at it. And let's see. Do, 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 do. Mama just killed a man. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I was doing that too. Here we go. All right. <laughs> All right. Can you see that? Ooh, yes. I love this one. This is one of my favorites. I really like the imagery. I know. This one is one of my favorites. So go ahead and take a look and then just tell me what what feelings you get from this. What what do you think this is? What does it mean to you? Do you get a mother vibe? What other vibe do you get? I mean, the first thing I noticed was the corn dolly. Yep. Which immediately makes me think of like breed and um, of, uh, I can think of names of, of goddesses, um, Demeter. Yes, there you go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was thinking of Demeter too, and it's, for some reason I was like, you know, the one that we, the big one. The one that, that we, we do the festival for. <laughs> <laughs> that one. <laughs> Um, so Demeter, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I get Demeter vibes from this. I there it there, I get a lot of feelings from the corn dolly. Like it's not just that like the corn like the corn dolly has a vibe. Yes, it does. It has the to, vibe. To me, the corn dolly has a lot of folklore, that kind of mm -hmm. backwoods Native mm -hmm. American witchcraft, mm -hmm. very um very folksy magic, very folk magic, mm -hmm. very, and um, there's a little bit of a, I get kind of a Blair Witch feeling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like maybe I get this. Oh, Sorry, go ahead. go ahead. No, 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 please. I was, I get this sense of like, this is not like, I don't know if we've done the father card already, but uh, like, yes. 
in con I feel like in contrast to the father card, this is focusing on the like on witchcraft versus like Wicca, where it's like instead of focusing on like the structure, this is focused on the practice and the practicality and like doing things at home, like home magic, like yes. make a cup of coffee and blessing it in the morning or yeah. Like, things like that. Like, I get that kind of vibe from it, which also can be spooky. It gives you that, like, mm-hmm. sense of... And I think that hails back to, like, our roots as American witches of, like, there's a spookiness to house magic because it's related to the burning times. Yes. Yes. And I like how you say spooky because... And there, there's also the... Um, it's crafty. It's mm-hmm. using what's around you. But there's almost this... Uh, voodoo doll kind of you know mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. feeling so it's like if I saw one of these without knowing let's say you know if I was a baby witch or just didn't really know a whole lot about witchcraft and I walked into someone's house and they had these the um these dollies all over the corn dollies all over it would kind of spook me out like I'd be mm-hmm. like what are they what what spells are they putting on people (laughs) (laughs) yeah 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 but i but i like that because it's a rustic back to nature back to our Mm -hmm. origins kind of feeling which i think is in sense what we talk about with the mother is getting back to the goddess getting back to the nurturer getting back to the one that creates the creatrix the yeah it's it's that feeling of this energy has been around from the beginning of time, you know. Strong Mabin and Lamas vibes for mm-hmm. sure. With Absolutely. the corn and the corn dolly. Yep. I really feel like I just, there's something about these braids, like the braided necklace and the braids in the hair. It gives me like a very it's like an added element that most people don't put into a corn dolly. Yeah. Like most people just do the corn dolly. Yeah. In my experience. And so like that is like an added element of like nurturing and motherhood and like makes it clear what the intended role of this corn dolly is. And also I think of um which we talked about a few weeks ago we were talking about cords and mm-hmm. I see not magic within the braiding mm-hmm. and also you know there's a lot of uh, talk and discussion about a witch's, why witches like their hair long. There's magic in the long hair, and when you braid it, you're putting intent into it and magic. So there's all sorts of awesome things that are represented mm-hmm. in this image. I That's why it's one of my, my very favorite images, because it just, it just brings up so many different types of witchcraft and spell work. Mm-hmm. Which, and then the bows, too. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. there's a symbolism to the red bows. Yep. There's likely an, a specific intent, which could be multiple things, because red stands for more than one thing. Exactly. Um, but there's there's the red bows and the red ribbon around the waist and the red ribbon around the neck. Yeah. I feel that that can represent the blood of the mother, the blood of the mm-hmm. womb. I think it could also represent passions and um, um, it could be, again, if we want to go spooky, it could be blood of uh, something else, you know, mm-hmm. it could be because people use blood magic. And I mean, this is all, like I said, this is total folk magic mm-hmm. right here, mm-hmm. and which mm-hmm. I love. I love reading about folk, folk magic. I love it so much. Um, it's the stuff that all the folk horror movies are made of, like, uh, mm-hmm. um, oh my god, what was that called? Midsummer and oh my god, Midsummer, such I, a good one. I love that movie. I've seen it several times because I love it so much. And also, um, uh, what is that called? The Wicker Man. You know that that mm-hmm. folk horror. It's one of my favorite genres of of horror mm-hmm. movies. It's the folk horror because it does study, it does explore things that maybe might be offensive to some of us witches, but I don't get offended by it because there were these things that people did to survive and what they believed in and what was the sacrifice. Um, Mm -hmm. There's sacrifice in this too, I see. It's sacrificial. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which doesn't mother energies have a lot of sacrificial energy? A whole lot of sacrificial <laughs> right? right? Like these especially in Western culture, like I find that that motherhood is very much embodied in a lot of sacrifice in our mm -hmm. culture. So like at least from our lens, like looking at this, I see a lot of sacrificial energy, which makes it even more appropriate that it's a corn dolly. Because right? corn, you know, we typically burn as an yep. offer once they've like had their time. Yep. So yeah, awesome image. I I love it. So I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing so we can get to our notes. Where am I? Here we go. All right. So it's the Stardust Day. It's the Stardust Day. Stardust Day. All right. Ah, what are you doing? Oh my God. I'm just technical difficulties. All right. Here we go. <laughs> so, what I want to really folk not focus on but but add to this is and th this is in the notes and mm -hmm. this is just a given but if anyone's watching this um i want to make sure people know that mother energy when we celebrate it you don't have to be a mother mother energy mm -hmm. is in all of us it doesn't matter what gender you are what if you even if you are don't identify as a particular gender we all have the nurturer of the mother mm -hmm within us. Mm -hmm. And that is so important. That's why we bring this up. Um, so what kind of things do you think of? What words do you think of when you hear the word mother? I mean, like we were saying earlier, sacrifice, I find that like, in, in our culture, we expect like mothers to sacrifice like their jobs and their passions and like, and their bodies mm. to care for their children and their families yeah. and like luckily we're moving <laughs> past some of those expectations yeah but there's still like an element of sacrifice because at the very least mothers sacrifice their bodies in yeah. order to carry a child into this world and so like in a very like physical sense that's what comes up but then when you think about how a person nurtures another person and embodies motherhood whether or not they are like a a, actual a human mom. mother to a yeah, human yeah. um they they still make sacrifices when they care for others and they still yeah. like embody that energy of like i might sacrifice my time to like my cousin was failing algebra one the final and, and mm -hmm. you have to it's like a state test. So even though she passed the class, she had to retake the class because she failed the state final. So oh, yeah. I had to like, she retook it over the summer and I like sacrificed my time that I had to do whatever I wanted and like tutored her and helped her learn algebra one so that she could pass the test. Mm -hmm. She did. And like, that was the sacrifice that I took because I could have been watching Netflix. I could have like got a summer job or did something yeah. else with that time but I chose to do that for her and nurture her and help her grow and like it's things like that that embody that mother energy and also like nurturing is a word that comes to my mind a lot yep nurturing mm -hmm. patience mm -hmm. um I just taking care that nur the nurturing is the big one too yeah just mm -hmm. taking care of people we there's a lot of a lot of us with the mother energy that love to nurture and take care of people. But guess what we end up doing? We end up not taking care of ourselves because we're no. such nurturers. And <clears throat> it's it's hard to sometimes hear, I'm a nurturer, without automatically thinking um, you give, 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 and you don't take anything. And... Um, I think being a good nurturer, you have to learn to take care of yourself because like they say, you can't take care of others if you're <laughs> running on empty. Yeah. You can't I give you can't. nothing to give. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I, I know uh, for me, I'm, 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 I'm clearing a lot of stuff off my plate right now mm -hmm. because I am not able to, cause I do so many things and I'm getting to the point where I'm overwhelmed and I'm not taking care of the things that are right here in front of me. I'm so busy, like, out here, you know, you know. Um, so I am making a sacrifice 
in saying, you know what, I love doing these things, but I got to get back to Lola. I got to get back to me. And so I'm making some big changes and it's hard. It's hard for me to do that because I feel like I feel guilt. Like, Mm -hmm. oh, I've, Mm -hmm. I've been doing this for so long for these people, or I've been helping with this, or I've been helping with that. Um, there's this guilt that comes in. And that's another word I think that we associate Mm -hmm. with the mother energy is guilt. Like we're not supposed to take care of ourselves and have things for ourselves. We're always everyone else we take care of. Mm -hmm. Right. I think, you know, that's really funny because I feel like a lot of us are in that place right now. Like a lot of us are in that season. I feel like we are seeing that like, we've been mothering and we've been nurturing we've been doing things that serve others to a point where we're not mothering ourselves and i like i had an interesting conversation with my therapist this week about that oh Um, really yeah yeah so we were talking about how like i get i've been feeling really lonely and so like (laughs) and so she was like i mean have you ever tried to like take yourself on a date i know this sounds like funny but like oh but like what if you like did something for yourself you know so that you're not like depending on someone else to do it for you and i was like that's a really good idea like um it, in ways and, and I think that's parallel to this like we have to mother ourselves too like we yes. have to be kind to ourselves and give ourselves that mothering voice because if we don't and no one else is doing it then ugh. we're not we're not serving our community or our um peers or what and whatever situation not even just in in the pagan uh, community, but in, in your jobs and, and your mm-hmm. relationships we're just we can't we're we're useless if we don't take care of ourselves and we know this we'd say this all the time right it's like yeah self-care yeah (laughs) boundaries self-care right like we always say it but then doing it is a whole other thing it's a whole nother thing and it's so ridiculous that we can't do that I, i i'm getting so much better at it if i wasn't getting better at it and i didn't see the the importance of it we wouldn't be in this like you said because there are a lot of people that are taking hiatuses and taking breaks and taking, you know, taking a step back and going, let me reassess what mm-hmm. I'm doing. And I I know that this comes from, I think one of those organizers, Marie Kondo or whatever her name is, when she says, when you organize your stuff, when you're wanting to get rid of something, does it spark joy? Well, I yes, do the that's same. That's yeah. Marie Kondo method. Yeah. But I like that same mm-hmm. because I use that with, things that I just do, not just things that I have, but things yes. like, is it sparking joy in me anymore? And and it has nothing to do with people on the other end being terrible people or whatever. If it's not sparking joy, then there's a, there, you've got to listen to that voice mm-hmm. and like, go, why, you know, why is that not sparking joy? Why is that, you know, and I, that's was the thing that I was clearing my plate. Does this spark joy anymore? <laughs> Doesn't mean it won't spark joy later on, but right now, just not feeling it. So clean off the plate. And, and that doesn't mean that it didn't before either. Right? Yeah, like, yeah. It doesn't mean that it lost value. It's just not, this is not the moment or the time. Yeah. But it a lot of the time, I look, I'm saying this as if I'm like a, so perfect with this concept, yeah. but I'm really, but, but it, <laughs> back to what but, yeah, we understand it though, and and you learn it as you get older, and you learn it when you have more responsibilities in your community, especially if you want to go into clergy work. If you're being trained mm-hmm. for that, um, that's a big one because in clergy work we have to be able to balance how we care for others. Because you are, we're the goddess called me to this. Mm-hmm. I don't know why. I mean, I do, but sometimes I'm like, why the fuck? Like, because there's times when I just want to step away from it all and just be like, mm-hmm. I want to go hide in a cave. Um, I'll come out in the spring or whatever. It's probably this time of year, too, because we're coming up to May Bond, which is this is what happens every year. I beat the meter and hide in the cave. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> Yep. So, but yep. this is a good part of clergy. We do have that mother nurturing energy in us because we want to help people. 
We mm-hmm. want to be there for people. And so in your training, um, this is really important to, yes, you have that in you. You have that nurturer in you. But you better know when it's time to, oh, crap, I need to nurture myself. I need to mother myself. Um that is like a mama bear. The mama yeah. bear still hibernates in the winter. Mm-hmm. If she doesn't, she can't take care of her babies. Yep, exactly. Yes. Mm-hmm. And I love I love the mama bear thing because I'm I'm such a mama bear. I'm such a mama. The bear is one of my spirit animals that comes to me. Um, mm-hmm. I've had dreams that I'm a mama bear and I'm protecting my cubs. I have a, a real uh, connection with, with mama bear. We love mama bear. We do love mama bear. So what about relationships with our own mothers? Oh, yikes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I know, but this is, an, yeah. this is important because sometimes people have a, a, the way they nurture, it's either because they were not nurtured by their mothers, so they overdo it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I know a lot of people that have strained relationships with their own mothers, and I see how it affects them when they are caring for others or, Mm -hmm. or maybe not caring for themselves because maybe that relationship with their mother, maybe their mother was all about, okay. For example, my mom, wonderful mother. I love her. She's 82 years old. She's, she's a great mother, but Mm -hmm. she's also of the generation that it's almost this martyr type Mm -hmm. thing where I do all this. Oh, no, I don't have time to relax. Why would I relax? Good mothers don't relax. They have to clean the house and they have to take care of the kids and they have to make sure the husband's okay. And they have to do this, this, and this, and this. Mm. Why are you, why do you need self-care? You don't need self-care. You don't need therapy. Just do it. We're mothers. Well, Mm. sorry, mom, but that doesn't work. (laughs) (laughs) Mom, I saw how that went for you, and I'm not doing it. Right, right. Yes. Right. <laughs> she doesn't know how to relax, yeah. even at 82 years old. She's Dang. got a bad hip, and uh, she can and she barely still walk. the house. Yep. Oh, yeah, she cleans that whole house. She just goes, 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 like and I'm like, yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, Mom, <laughs> relax, take a break. No, there's no time to take a break. And I go, oh. You can't you're convince like, her, but yeah. You're like, Our mom, you're tired. <laughs> yeah. she, but that's her. That's 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 her. She's never never going to change. She's 82. Try changing the mind of an 82-year-old woman. That It just doesn't work. <laughs> but, that's, yeah, I right? feel that. Because I have a really strained relationship with my mother. Not like, I don't know. Like, there's a lot to unpack there. But, um. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I like how my, you my mom had an abusive relationship after she divorced my dad and I got kind of forced to stick with it until mm-hmm. I was 16 and said I'm not visiting you anymore she moved to New York when I was 12 and I moved in with my dad and like when I was 16 I got sick of it and I was like I'm not doing this anymore I'm not coming home I'm not coming to visit you this summer Yeah, and like I've just always had a super strained relationship with her since then. Because, like, as I've gotten more distant and, like, more aware of what happened in my past, like, I've realized more and I've felt more, like, betrayed, I guess, is, like, the word I would use. Mm -hmm. And it's, like, really hard for me to unpack that. And, like, part of me still wants to have a relationship with my mother and the other part, like, just doesn't trust her. Yeah. And so it's really difficult. That's like a difficult one for me. But I think that what that has done is caused me to like overcompensate and like how I care for others. Mm-hmm. So instead of which like, I'm not nice to myself though. Um, <laughs> I love I, anxiety and depression. Uh, <laughs> But I um. Why am I laughing? You've got depression. <laughs> ah! Yeah. It's because I sang it I to know, make it, it like it awkward. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so my mom, 
I just have like a really strained relationship with her, which is really weird because I have a lot of like mothering energy around me. Like there are people who I would look toward that I would say are mother or mother like figures to me who I like look up to for various reasons who have helped me and have nurtured me. So it's really interesting, like navigating mother energy because oftentimes nowadays I would not even associate mother energy with my like biological mother, but rather like my chosen mothers. Yep. Yes. And, and Mm -hmm. that right there is why we seek maybe what we didn't get. Mm -hmm. We -hmm. just, we just do that. I, um, I know for me, I am very nurturing to people. I, I, I want to make sure everyone is, okay, I'm a hug, I hug, I love, I do these things. Mm-hmm. I'm, I ask, are you okay? I've been this way my whole life. And it's not that I didn't get that from my mom, but I think um, because she was such a perfectionist and she's a Leo, so that, you know, yeah, right? My um, mom is a Leo too. Oh, how funny. <laughs> my mom and my dad are both Leos. And then my rising sign is Leo. So, um yeah, there's a whole, there's yeah. a whole thing with it. <laughs> but anyway, but my mom was such a perfectionist and my mom was so, um, she's very concerned with how you look and how you present yourself and, very you know. Very Latin. Yes, that too. <laughs> your clothes have to be clean and pressed and always have your makeup and your hair done. And, um, and there's, so there was always this pressure for me to, always, if I didn't look, if I didn't uh, meet my mother's approval with how I looked aesthetically, it just, it really effed up my self-esteem. And so for me, Mm -hmm. I do the opposite. I'm like, I don't care what you wear. I don't care how you look. You are loved. You are this, you are that. Because I'm not, I don't want to make someone feel like, that's why my kids, they're very much, they have their own style. They have their own sense of who they are. I never judge them if they're, if, you know, my mom used to couldn't figure out the clothes I wore. Um, I was very punk rock and gothy looking and she was like, that looks ridiculous, you know? And, um, mm-hmm. and now my kids, you know, they're very much, they dress the way they want to dress. My boys love wearing pink. That mm-hmm. would not pass in my, ho- in my parents' household. Boys don't wear pink. It's like, well, my boys do, and they fucking rock it. Like, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so yeah, we 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 either we pick up things like, oh, that was a good thing that my mom did. But I think that most of us are like, yeah, I'm not gonna do what she did. I'm gonna do it differently. Well, and that's, that's like that. I feel like that's part of human nature is like to criticize yeah. something the opposite of that, or at yep. least attempt to, right? Yeah. But the things that we pick up because it's all we know. <laughs> yeah, and then when you start sounding like your mother or acting like your mother, and yeah, You're I like, catch that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, my God, I just, oh, my God, yeah. So. Um, I can get back. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, never mind. Um, the, so, yeah, mother aspect in all of us, whether we're moms or not, because mm-hmm. there's that, that need to want to take care, to help people grow. Um. I think we are in this, especially for me and you, Sammy, we are, we run in the same circles. We went to the school or whatever, and we, we're, we're learning clergy work. We're learning how to take care of the people that need us. So there is a guide in us because I feel mother energy is also guiding. There's also tough love. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Definitely mm-hmm. tough like love. Like Yes. Yes. I was going to bring her up. So you've got, you've got the nurturing energy of um, Hestia or, you know, the, just the, you know, or they want to take care. Like one of the doting goddesses that's very like my baby. Um, uh, I See, Demeter, but then she went. Well, you know, I think of went. like Demeter before, like. To be fair, in this particular context, I'm talking about Demeter with, like, Corey before she, like, has her little phase. (laughs) Yes, before she loses her shit. Yeah. But then you've got the tough love. Because, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, 
which I find is so interesting, but they just don't know Hecate like some of us do. They, they're they afraid to work with her. And I'm like, she's one of the most motherly, protective, she's my mother. She's my grandmother. She's, she, mm-hmm. I go, she's my main mama. And mm-hmm. because I need her tough love. I need mm-hmm. that. A lot of us do. Well, and that's like, there's a difference between like tough love and like, being mean and I think some people are worried because of things that they've heard that Hecate is going to be mean and it's not mean it's loving it's just straightforward and honest yes and that's hard to do um that's hard Mm -hmm. for us to do sometimes you have to slap a friend not physically but you know metaphorically at them yeah <laughs> yes yes and be like oh my god stop what you're doing you're being an idiot you know um it's it's hard i know it's getting easier for me to to do tough love but do it in a caring way um i had to tell someone the other day that i love you um and you're always welcome in our circle but when you bring you're there's there's a lot going on in their life outside of circle that's um and it's not physically going on there's just a lot of it's it's everything it's the world the weight of the world is Mm -hmm. really getting to them and several times they've brought that negative energy into the circle Mm -hmm. and i'm like you know it it's perfect love and perfect trust we have to have that and there's a reason why we say some people actually say if you have any you know i know in the red tent women's circle we say if you have any animosity for anyone here or we've said that in other circles if you have any animosity for anyone here this evening please remove yourself from this circle mm-hmm. and, and mm-hmm. basically deal with that mm-hmm. and then you're free to come back well that's hard to say to someone you care about mm-hmm. <laughs> but mm-hmm. i had to say it and be like okay uh You know, um, do you still feel perfect love and perfect trust in this circle? Because what how I'm perceiving it is it it, it's carried over into the circle and we can't have perfect love and perfect trust if someone is bringing in that energy. And and we've all done it before. We've all Mm -hmm. done. it. That's the thing is I wasn't like you're doing this and I never do that. No, we've all done it. And from personal experience, it really fucks up the flow of the circle. Mm-hmm. So that's tough love. That's saying, hey, in so many words, leave your shit at the door <laughs> and then come in and figure out how to do it yet. That's okay. Yeah, exactly. Deal with it. Yeah. Yes. That yeah. was really hard for me to say, but I knew that if I want to be a good teacher and I want to be mm-hmm. um, a good mother, you have mm-hmm. to say those things you to, mm-hmm. to your kids or your family or your friends. It's that tough love. And it doesn't have to be mean or insensitive. It can be done in a loving way. And there's a, there's, it, there's that's, a skill. Like, that's like one of the things that I've noticed that my friends will say to me, or I'll say to my friends, you know, like <laughs> in a lot of ways, our society teaches us to like talk ourselves down and like say mean things to ourselves And, like, I've noticed that a lot of my friends and I, to my friends when they do it, like, when people do that, you're you're like, hey, don't talk to my friends like that. Yes. And that puts it in context of, like, I like that. Showing that person that they're being mean to themselves. And it's a way of, like, kindly, like, stop doing that. (laughs) I love when when people say that to me because it reminds it really brings me in the moment of oh shit yeah Yeah. don't talk about my friend that way and i'm like wait oh i'm i'm your friend you're talking about me oh oh my god i was wasn't i yeah it's yeah (laughs) it is it is so tough love is is good we need that yep yep um and i i love the teaching aspect of it Mm -hmm. self-respect i think that's a Mm -hmm. good one and security Mm -hmm. I always want to teach uh, our house. When you come into our home, it's very, very small. We have a tiny mm-hmm. little house. It's very cluttered because we have a tiny house. But everyone that walks in this door, I, I have worked very hard at making this a safe place for people. Um, mm-hmm. When you walk in, you can feel that 
the love and support and you can be yourself and you can say whatever you want and you can if you want to you can take a nap on my couch you can you know mm -hmm. um i've worked really long and hard at making this a secure safe space because that is really important to me because again my mother's home is a it's it's clean like she's a clean person yeah. yes yeah, yeah. and um, then you feel like you mess anything up yes mm -hmm. you can't really relax you know you don't mm -hmm. like and and i always felt like oh you know so i kind of went the opposite way because i am not a good housekeeper um and i've come to terms with that that took a mm -hmm. long time to come to terms with but sorry puppies lay down so i think that mother energy we want to provide that 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 safe mm -hmm. space those those not just the physical arms that they come and hug, but the metaphorical, symbolic mm -hmm. place. Mm -hmm. Hugs. Mm -hmm. I love hugging people. That's my mother energy saying, let me let me just... And then plus I have the big boobs. Yeah, and so it helps, yeah. I, oh my God, people. And I don't get offended by it. I never... I, they rest their head on my boobs because it's very comfortable. I mean, my boys, when they were little, they did that. You know, it was like, come to mama, you know, and they just rest. And I have friends that just like, oh, and I'm like, that's right. Just let, <laughs> let mama's boobs take all the, the, the stress away. <laughs> I love and that. they do. I love They're magical yeah. boobs. They are. They are. <laughs> they are. You, uh, when we meet in person, which we will, uh, I will give you the hug and you will just feel the magic, you'll just be like, oh. And when I feel, <laughs> when I hear that sigh, oh, I'm like, oh, oh, I've done my job. I've made them feel yeah. better. Even if it's, <laughs> yeah, I, it's just, it's, I love it. It's a great feeling. Oh, I'm excited for when I meet you because I'm probably going to squeal. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! So that'll be fun. Um, <laughs> what other things do you think of? I mean, I have a whole list yeah. of other There's things so here. What? Things. There's so many things with mothers, you know, we yeah. could talk about mommy issues or the other end, you know. Yeah. <laughs> what about think, uh, providing? Do you, providing? That's, where, that's funny because I had been thinking about that while we were talking about the last topic. Yeah. So I think, you know, mothers provide so much. Like when you think of mothers, oftentimes like people think when they hear providing without the context, they'll think of fathers first. But I feel like that's a... Uh, old-fashioned that's, that's really old-fashioned and that's mm -hmm. not quite how it goes yeah so like mothers provide things like i mean one a womb for nine months thank you um, yeah. that's a big uh yeah we rent that room out for a long time or that womb <laughs> yeah <Anyways. laughs> oh my god I, sorry, anyway um, so, um, they also, you know, mothers provide a home, a uh, sacred space, um, to be yourself in, um, you know, they provide our material possessions that we need as children. Um, they provide food or at least they do their very best, right? Like they mm -hmm. try to provide food, clothing, shelter, our basic necessities, and they'll do what they need to do to make it happen. Oftentimes, even if yeah. that's not like morally acceptable yeah um and so there's that like provider energy there that is like i'm going to give you what you need which i think also translates well into like the divine like wiccan mother trope as well because yeah. you know we think of like providers um like demeter as the great mother mm -hmm. or um providers like um in other traditions well yeah. yeah well there's also um uh this says allows for growth with enough freedom to become your own person but guided along the way um yeah. i've got recipes providing food like we said we feed providing <laughs> the food the, the support hugs grounding so what what would you associate mother energy with is there an element earth, earth. earth. i almost always go with earth 
I mean, there are, you can associate motherhood with any of the yeah. elements. But it's funny, but, you and I both said Earth first. Maybe because we're I mean, it's not like we're Earth signs. But <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's not like sick, I have six Capricorn or anything. So, yeah. <laughs> but I, um, <laughs> but um, I, I often associate motherhood with Earth. I think a lot of that has to do with like the fertility associations with motherhood. Yeah. Um, and the like grounding nature of motherhood like when you think of like even like I with the most tense relationship I have with my mother like when I think of like when I was a kid hugging my mother like that's that was it like that's yeah. what I needed at the end of a bad day yep like and don't you, and don't you want to so provide grounding. that that safety for even now like because mm-hmm. that's what I think of I think of my mom when she used to hug me and it was a safe place to come and be in that hug I, that's what I I, I want to provide that for people is like this is a safe yeah. place. That's what I think of too. Or is even like, time. there's like I remember when I was little and it was like just me and my mom because my mom divorced my dad when I was like three and there was a period of time where it was like literally just us, and like I remember I would like brush her hair, like Aww. all the time, and like that was a very grounding thing for me. Yeah. And like, there's just like mothers are associated with this grounding energy and it's very earthy to me like these things that are like typically associated with motherhood but there's also like other associations as well like you know the passion of a mother could be very like fiery yep Um, and especially like when their baby is in danger yes Um, yeah heck yeah or like motherhood in the concept of like the womb and birthing can be very watery. Yeah. Um, and, and then air is the teacher, the, the teacher. Yeah, the te- yeah. Yeah. And the well, guide and yeah. Yeah. Well, so in the, and then, you know, and I think we also think of earth as the first one is because, well, we talk about mother earth, Gaia. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's, mm-hmm. that's the ultimate mother, right? Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> The I mother mean, of all the goddesses. The right? mother of all mothers is our planet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so no wonder we think of Earth. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And also, but what about in when you think of, because we, we talked about Maiden last week. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm sure Crone is coming up soon. Yeah, it is. Mm-hmm. Um, so mother, what part, when we talk about the triple moon, what part mm-hmm. of the triple moon is mother? You know, I... That's so so it would be the full moon in yeah. like the moon phases. Yeah. Um but there's something to that of like the mother is the stage of like I've had my children, I'm raising them, um, I am bringing into fulfillment this like passing on of knowledge or whatever it is that like your version of motherhood. Yeah. Um, and and it's that period in between like being raised and growing and coming into yourself as a crone. Yeah. I, well, and that's kind of where I'm at right now because, uh, yeah. you know, my, my children are 13 and 18. They're pretty self-sufficient. Yes. I, they're still home. I, I still need to provide that, but they don't need me hands on as much. Um, uh-huh. um, and so now I'm getting into the phase of more independence for myself and being able to like, oh, I've got things that I can do to make myself happy. And then passing on wisdom to others <laughs> that may be um, becoming mothers themselves or taking on projects where they are teaching or being a mother. And that's that crone, that wisdom of the crone. Mm-hmm. But I know in the, in, at the, at a, oh my God, why am I having a brain fart? Wollstonestein Theological Seminary. I know that they do four faces too. They do the the yeah. uh, maiden, uh, maiden mother, queen, and crone. And there's the queen <laughs> phase, which I freaking love because that's kind of where I'm at now. And I love <laughs> it because it's like I'm not quite crone yet, but I know I'm not mother because that that full moon is like the womb, you know, and it's that full. <coughs> That, you know, carrying the, the, the babies in your belly, you're fertile, it's all, you know, ready to go. Um, it sound, I made it sound so weird. It's all ready to go in there. Uh, <laughs> mine is not. <laughs> mine is done with that. Um, I don't bleed anymore. I, um, I'm not planning on having children. I'm 49. I'm done. 
-hmm. So um, I am at that phase kind of between mother and crone, which is the queen. And mm -hmm. um, so that is a, that's a big part of too, is, is when we, again, we can have that energy as well. It's like, we have reached that part in our life where we're like, it's time for me. It's time well, for me. A lot of that too, like relates to, you know, the, the trope of the mother, the maiden mother and crone comes from a time period where people did not live like nearly as long as they do now. Yeah, and so exactly. Th yeah. There needs to be that other role because we've developed that over time because now yeah. the people who would have been crones then they're, don't fill that role because no. they're Yeah. And I don't feel crony. I feel cronish in things like things that I can, I've learned things that I can, some, some wisdom that I can pass on to people, but um, it also could be vanity. It could be the, the, the Leo rising in me where I'm not quite ready to accept cronehood. And my acceptance of cronehood is, is growing the gray out. I've got the silver and, and that to me is, that's a good baby step. Mm -hmm. um, we're coming up to an hour. Or so before God, we could talk forever about this. This was really fun. Just you and yeah. I talking. I loved it. Um, here's a, a key word I want to talk about real quick is unconditional love. Mm, yeah. So I have opinions on this. Mm -hmm. And it's changed over the years. Um, when I became a mother, when my children were young, I understood unconditional love because I had unconditional love for my children. And I was always taught by society that you can't have unconditional love except for your own children. And I believed that until I started having different friendships and relationships mm -hmm. and people in my life that I do consider family and I do have unconditional love for them. Um, mm -hmm. what do you, what, are, what is your take on that? On unconditional love? Do you think you like, I feel like as a queer person, I can't like validate, um, a, a theory that would like disclude people's chosen family. Right. Exactly. And so like, for me, one of the really big things is that people are rejected by their family all the time. So to put that like unconditional love is something that you only share with your own children or like your own parents or siblings or like biological family, mm -hmm. um, I think cheapens the idea of unconditional love. Yep. And I also feel like as Wiccans, like, you know, we talk about perfect love and perfect trust, like that is mm -hmm. unconditional love too. So yes. you know, the people that we do circle with, we're supposed to have unconditional love for it. That's hard. Yes, it is. Unconditional love is not easy. It is not. <laughs> it, it is, is challenging. Not, there's a lot of challenges. I think the best way that it was ever described to me how to have perfect love and perfect trust in the circle because outside of the circle is different because <laughs> mm -hmm. we're, but in the circle, we are all, my divinity, my divine recognizes your divine in the circle. Mm -hmm. And when you're of that divine nature, because when you are in the circle, you are a vessel. Every single mm -hmm. one of you is a vessel for magic and the divine. And so mm -hmm. when you can recognize that in the other, that's the unconditional love right there. That's the, mm -hmm. That's the perfect love and perfect trust because I know that what you bring into this circle and what you bring out and what you show and we see them in a different light. When you're in circle with someone, my coven mates look mystical and magical mm -hmm. just in that circle because I'm seeing I'm seeing that their true, their higher self. There we go. Their mm -hmm. higher self. And our higher selves is unconditional love. That's how I view it. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that to me helped me learn how to have that perfect love and perfect trust and that unconditional mm -hmm. love in my circle because we're not really us in the circle. We're something else. Something we're something big. Yeah. yeah. So that's always made, that's been really helpful for me to, because there's been people in, in past circles I've been in where we may not get along you know, we may not, we may have our differences, but when we practice magic together, that shit doesn't even matter. It just doesn't mm -hmm. matter. And that's a wonderful feeling. But then there's the ones that you can't get past it. You can't get mm -hmm. past that energy. And that's when you have to step away from circle 
and deal with that. Yeah, I definitely feel that. And I'm kind of, I've kind of gone through that recently. So I, I feel that. And, and it's really important to separate it. And if you can't, just take a break. Take a take breather. A break. Yeah, because yeah. we're human. We're human. We're going to have those feelings. It, it is impo- it's, it's unrealistic to ask someone, um, don't have feelings of jealousy towards this person or don't have feelings of anger or don't have, any, you know, we're freaking human first, mm-hmm. you know, and, mm-hmm. and those, that shit's going to come up, especially if you have a friendship with them or you have a working relationship or you're related to them or you're married to them or whatever, dating or whatever. There's going to be shit that comes up outside a circle mm-hmm. and it's hard to leave it outside a circle. Um, but that's why you have the option. Don't come, don't come to circle. We won't be offended. Uh, step away from circle. And if it even takes you longer than tonight to work mm-hmm. out your issues, I would rather you do that. I would have more respect for you that you did that. And you actually said, man, I can't come in this circle with whatever because of something. And we got to work it out. As a high priestess, I'd be like, yeah, thank you for doing that because we don't want that shit coming in. <laughs> you know, So <laughs> Thank mm-hmm. you for thinking about us as well, mm-hmm. you know? Um, so I think love without condition, unconditional love is a big part of it. And, and, uh, I, I'm, I'm glad that you brought that up with being part mm-hmm. of the queer community. You have chosen family because there's so many in your community that have been kicked out and been disowned. So that's mm-hmm. our family. And, you you develop that with them mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah and i especially find you know especially for queer people of color like if you look at like the house system of like mm-hmm. of um queer trans people in new york um of color mm-hmm. that are like drag queens and trans people all living together like that's their family that's yes. And that's, un- man, boy, is that unconditional love. Because those right? people all chose to live together and take care of each other and stick up for each other, despite, like, discrimination, despite, mm-hmm. like, anything. And they, like all, they-, they all fight like family, and they all make up like family. Mm-hmm. And But I sometimes think your chosen family is so much stronger than your assigned family because you made a conscious choice to, to pick that person and say, hey, we're, we're this together. You don't have well, a choice with your assigned yeah. family. With your assigned family, sometimes it's really hard because I didn't choose, like, to do this. So I don't have that same motivation. Whereas, like, with chosen family, I chose you because mm-hmm. I needed someone. And you chose me because you needed someone. And yeah. we were both here for each other. So if we're going through something, we'll figure it out. Because obviously, exactly. like, we chose each other for a reason. Mm-hmm. There's just something on. Well, so. It's the same in, in our witch community where we are coven brother. That's why I call them my coven brothers and sisters. Mm-hmm. They're my magical family. They're my, I, we chose each other to practice something that can really reveal things that maybe we won't share with people outside of the circle, but in circle, they see us, they see the, the, the shadow work. They see the vulnerability. They see that part because we are being our higher self and we are, and we are working to that. And sometimes in the process of working to that, you're going to see all the, oh, ah, the cracks and the crevices and the hidden things. And mm-hmm. but we chose to show that to each other. So mm-hmm. I love that. That's so awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to do come to Madame Zola. And you go to Madame Zola. You're like, I need a one card reading, Madame Zola. And whatever card you choose is me right now. And Madame Zola goes, well, this is the card that you get. Oh, shit. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't say that. <laughs> Let me turn the background off. <laughs> this is the no, card you chose. Oh, shit. No, that's that's not good. Um, here we go. This is the card. It's the mother card. So let's say, Sammy, she she chose this card for you. As of right now, how would you interpret this card? What does this mean to you right now? Um... Gosh, um, look toward the mother figures in your life and and reach out to them um, for guidance. I like that. Yeah. For me, um, 
there's a lot because I'm, I'm my mother's elderly and I've been taking care of her, so that comes up. <laughs> um, but with that said, I I feel that I I need to cut myself some slack as a mother mm-hmm. and stop beating myself mm-hmm. up um, because I I I do that a lot, um, not just with my children but with my coven with um, my dear friends that I'm very motherly with. I need to cut myself some slack and know that I'm 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 doing the best I can and and you know um, and take some time for myself and mother myself so I can still be that good mother mm-hmm. to others yeah mm-hmm. good mother to others <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put the um, image in the chat so you can uh, download it perfect you get the chat on your phone. Oh, good. Some people don't, so. Well, so far it's come in, so we'll see. We'll see. If it doesn't, then I'll pull up my computer, but I think it's coming because I see the, yes. There it is. Wait, yeah. not that kind of. <laughs> Did it go? Give me one sec. Save image. Beep, <laughs> Did you? I think I did. What was that noise you just made? <laughs> Who knows? I just make up noises. It sounds like you went pee 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 <laughs> That's exactly what I did. <laughs> pee pee <laughs> Oh, that's, I didn't realize that that's what it sounded like. Oh my god, that's so funny. Pee Because um, um, it was kind of like a pew pew. Oh, like, pew pew. But it kind of went pew pee pee <laughs> I, I just was like, that's okay, cool. That's a bit bizarre. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and put the link just in case. If we have, if I, because this is a solo right now. If I have facilitated a spiritual experience, there's the links to do-date. To, to do date. Oh my God. I swear to God, I'm sober. To do-date. There's the, <laughs> there's the links to donate if you'd like to. And remember, um, we are a, the donations are tax deductible and because we are a non-profit uh, 501c3. And there's those links. And so next week, we will be working with Father Energy. Go mm-hmm. figure. So I'm going to, I want to talk to you real quick, but I'm going to stop recording. So let's say bye okay. to the recording. Bye, bye. recording. We love you.